that I believe we really need to think about hard is how we can use AI to help us to change. See, one of the interesting things about human beings is that many of us have behaviors that we want to change. We've built up things over time that we want to do something about, that we want to change. We have ambitions, we have goals, we have systems to try and help us to change. See, one of the interesting things about change when it comes to humanity is that we both crave change and fear change. We know change is incredibly difficult. And not only is it incredibly difficult for human beings, it's incredibly difficult for the people around the human beings. <clears throat> now, you've probably noticed that I'm changing the format of the show a little bit. So instead of having eight to 10 minute, super short, what some people have called, some of my listeners have called mind snacks, I'm going to go into a little more detail on a specific topic in every show. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear feedback on what you think about the topic and what we cover in the show. And today it's all about behavior modification. Now, if you ask me, this is what I would love AI to help us with. Now, here's the scenario. Let's think about years from now, maybe 10 years from now, because that's a nice round number. We use it all the time on our interview shows, talking about where things are going to be 10 years from now. So let's think about 10 years from now. Let's think about where AI might be when it comes to behavior modification 10 years from now. All right? Just let's think about it for a second. So here's what I imagine. What will happen is that we will all have a personal AI. So instead of the kind of AI that we have today, where the AI is actually run by some major corporation or even a smaller company, OpenAI, Amazon, Google, they all have their own AIs and they need to have an AI. They need to be able to have AIs now because they require a lot of compute power in order to run large language models and the bots that sit on top of those large language models require a lot of compute power it's extremely expensive also sucks up a lot of energy and that's today and the problem with that is and I've said this before when it comes to chatbots in general so for example something like Alexa or Google or even Siri those bots are not our bots. They don't work on our behalf. They work on behalf of the organization that runs them. And it's the same with ChatGPT. It's the same with Copilot. It's the same with Claude. All of these bots are run by organizations. And at the core of it, at the foundation of it, those bots are there for on behalf of the organizations. They're not there on our behalf. They're on the behalf of the organizations. And you could say that these bots are designed or written to help us. So when you sit down and you start writing into ChatGPT, start chatting with ChatGPT, you believe that the answers that it's giving you are there to help you. That's because that is the way it has been programmed by this organization, by OpenAI, by Microsoft, by Perplexity, by Claude, by Anthropic. These bots have been programmed to be helpful to you. So they seem helpful. But underneath it all, foundationally, these bots are actually owned by these organizations. They're literally, and right now they seem to be on our side, right? But they're not on our side. They're on their side. They're on the side of the organization. And at this point, you might feel that you can still, because we're still in the inception phase of all this, we feel that when we get the right answers or the answers we like from these bots, 
that they're okay, right? They're not overtly pushing the agenda of the organization. Although if you think about it, remember the issues with Google's Gemini, where it was purposely creating woke imagery that couldn't possibly exist? But I digress. So in the future, we will all have, and we're starting to see this today, smaller models, which will reside on our machines or on our smartphones, ideally on our smartphones, ideally somewhere where we can bring them with us. And whether they or not they physically reside on the phone itself, they should exist maybe in a separate cloud, maybe on the phone, but completely dedicated to us. They capture our information, they capture our everything around us, they capture our requests, and instead of sending them up to some corporate chatbot, they help us process those requests. So in this future, which is not that far off, we all have our own personal AI. And what happens with our personal AI is that in two different ways, either explicitly or implicitly, we suggest to our AI that here is something about ourselves that we want to change, right? So let's say, for example, it's something like weight loss. Let's say I was thinking that wouldn't it be great that if in about six months I could be 30 pounds lighter? I'd love to be able to lose some weight. This is weight that I've had all my life and I'd love to be able to lose it over the next six months. Perhaps there's a big trip coming that you want to go on and you want to be slim and trim for this. Maybe summer is coming and you want to wear something skimpy. Who knows? But right now, we all have to, if you had to do that right now, today, it would be extremely difficult for you to change your behavior in order to get to that point. First of all, we, it's tough for us to change. We fear change. Plus, the social web around us has to stretch to allow us to have this change, to allow this change to occur. Because people expect you to be a certain way. Everybody around you, the social network around you, your friends, your family, expects you to be a certain way. And when you try to change, not only are you trying to change against the human inertia that you have within yourself, you're also trying to stretch those connections from other people. And sometimes these other people are not too happy with the kind of changes that you are trying to make. Even if they say they support you, they may have issues with the change that you're trying to implement because they don't expect that from you. They've always seen you like this. Let's say you're a couch potato and you spend a lot of time watching TV and eating pretzels. All of a sudden, you want to go to the gym every day? You want to work out? Maybe a spouse who is, has low self-esteem might think that they don't want them anymore. There's lots of issues. Once you've built yourself into a certain situation in your social network, people expect you to act a certain way. And when you try to change, when you try to become different, then it's difficult for them to see you in that different light. But I digress. Let's talk about the future again. We're into a time frame where AI is personal. You have a personal AI. And like I said, through either ex express, you know, extrinsic, you say to your personal AI, you know what, by this date, by summer, I want to be skinny. I want to lose 30 pounds. Or it could notice that as, you're, as it watches you through your life, it notices that maybe you eat less. Maybe you go to the gym more. Maybe you feel like you walk more. So it notices these trends in your life. It notices that you want to change your life or change yourself, change your weight, and it says, oh, okay, if that's what he wants to do, then maybe I can help. Because that is one of the things, human beings, it's hard for us to change. 
And one of the most beautiful things about AI is that it can help us change. It can build systems around us, change our environment in so many ways in order to help us change. So here's the scenario that I'm going to paint. It's 10 years from now. We all have our personal AIs. The personal AI, you're talking to it, it's got a name probably, and you say, wouldn't it be great if I could lose X amount of pounds by summer because I want to look better in a bathing suit. And, you, and your AI would hear that and go, okay, sure, that sounds great. Let me help you with that. And you would think, especially if you were to do it today, you would have to go in there and it would say, well, here's an eating plan or here's a meal plan or here's an exercise plan or whatever. Here's some plans and you have to follow them. But no, your AI doesn't do that. Your AI builds the environment and the systems around you to allow you to change your diet, change your exercise. It does it for you. Just think of it as almost having a personalized trainer that works with you at all times. So I'll give you an example. You've already given it the directive that you want to lose weight. It knows what it needs to do for you specifically to lose weight. And this is one of the things that we're starting to see is that not every diet works for everybody. Not every exercise works for everybody, but every plan is personalized to the individual. So if this individual wants to lose X amount of weight in the specific amount of time, then they need to make these specific behavioral changes to their life in order to reach that goal. And what the AI does is it modifies the environment around the individual so that it helps them to be able to reach that goal. I'll give you an example. Instead of your autonomous vehicle taking you directly to your meeting, it takes you to a spot a certain distance away from your meeting and drops you off there in just enough time for you to walk to the meeting, building a walk into your day. Or let's say you walk into the building and you try to press the elevator button, but the elevator button doesn't work. And as soon as you press the elevator button, you get a text from your AI saying, take the stairs, more exercise. Or when you, in this future, we also have augmented reality goggles. We're wearing augmented reality eyeglasses, sunglasses, which display things in our vision at all times. Kind of like the movie Ready Player One, but less bulky, like the Apple Vision Pro, but looking more like an actual pair of sunglasses. We're all wearing these because it helps us to gain information about the world. Our AI is helping us to gain information about the world. So we decide we want to go to a restaurant. We sit down. The menu is given to us. And what happens is, as we're looking at the menu, we notice that some of the items are blacked out. We don't see those items on the menu because our AI has seen those items and has realized that those items on that menu do not meet our nutritional requirements. Or even before we sit down at the restaurant, we're walking down the street and we see the vista of the street in front of us thinking, I'm going to have to grab something to eat. I'm going to go get some lunch. You wouldn't actually see, or you would see a black mark over the restaurants that you're not allowed to walk into, or you shouldn't be walking into, according to your AI. So if you think about it, now some people might go, to, might go, oh my God, this is a terrible vision. I don't want that. But if you had a personal AI that was constantly on your side, helping you to reach your goals and guiding you towards the things you should have and restricting you from the things you shouldn't have, I can only see this as a good thing. And remember, it has to be a personal AI. You can have a corporate AI doing something similar, but are you going to be able to trust that this AI isn't directing you to the wrong restaurant or, the res or this restaurant instead of that restaurant? You have to look at the loyalties of the AI. Is the AI on your side or is the AI on the side of the corporation? Now, in this future world, 
where we have our AIs helping us to modify our behavior to reach our goals. If you think about it, the entire world will be completely different. I mean, can you imagine what sales is going to be like in that world? It won't be you, it won't be companies pitching you personally anything because your AI is going to intercept everything and it will be negotiating with these corporate AIs on your behalf. So you might be in the little cocoon of media and your AI will only allow you to see those things. Another example, you're sitting in front of your TV, you're watching something, a commercial comes on for a food that you shouldn't be eating. It gets blanked out or is replaced on the fly by your AI. Your personal AI won't let you see <laughs> that beer or that food that you shouldn't be eating. Now, some people might think that this is a nightmare scenario. I do not want my AI doing these things to me because it's actually going to warp my reality. I'm not going to be able to see what reality is. But the fact is, folks, is that some of us have issues with reality and may be better suited to be in that cocoon outside of reality, in a cocoon that helps them and guides them to go off to change their behavior in the way that they wish it to be changed. All of us need assistance. We need help. We can't, a lot of us can't change due to, from, from willpower alone. So having our personal AI be able to help us change, build those systems, build that environment around us that will help us change, will go a long way toward helping us change. Now, one of the things I do in my practice is I backcast. So from that future vision where your personal AI goes ahead and modifies your environment so that, it modif so that you can, it can help you modify your behavior, how do we backcast from that? So look, let's look at the granddaddy of that kind of service. So if in the future we all have personal AIs that help to modify the, our environment in order for us to reach our behavior modification goals, what do we need to do today to lead us to that world? What kind of changes do we need to do today to get us there? What kind of AI systems do we need today to eventually get us to that. And we're already starting to see it in the development of personal AIs, smaller LLMs, things like that. But what else do we need to do to help people modify the behavior? The ones that want to. This is not just anyone because corporations have been attempting to modify our behavior all the time, which is again, one of the reasons why personal AI, making it a personal AI is ultra important. So. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What can we do today to get us to this future that I've just described? And are you in agreement with this future? Is this the kind of future that you want to get to? Or do you find this to be some kind of dystopian unreality, which is the worst possible thing? Because I've asked people, I've asked people before about, wouldn't it be great if, you're, if all of these systems, if all of this technology could lift our burdens could do a lot of things for us without having to do it. Because if you think about it, a lot of our life is doing a bunch of little piddly things that we'd better be suited. It's better suited for an AI to do than us. And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. I want that agency. But do we really? Do we really want to continue to be responsible for each and every aspect of this incredibly busy life that we're having in this day and age and in a future day and age. Remember, the future is bright if we do it right. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.